Yeah, hey, Charlie. Uh, yeah, no, uh, no I, I wasn't waiting around. I just got in here. It's, by, by the way, pardon. There might be a, it might be a little glitchy. Um, You're good. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm curious uh, if, if you, uh, I guess it's two different questions. Um, did you, did you become comfortable with your daily routine last year? Um, your sort of daily preparation routine for games? with all of the different restrictions. Um, and do you know for certain that all of those things will still be in place this year? I mean, do you, are you going to have to feel out how you're going to go to go through your day to day stuff? Right. Um, so last year th th we changed a bunch of things and, and, and so there's an adjustment period. I, you know, I, I'm pretty habitual. I, I stick to my routine, that sort of thing. And there were just some things that I had to change. You know, if you wanted to play baseball this year, you've got to change them. Uh, so eventually I was able to make those changes uh, and change what normal was for me. Um, so yes, I, I got to a point to where I was comfortable, ready to play ball. Um, and as far as this year, it, it looks to me like they're, they're taking more steps to ensure their, the health and safety of players and fans. So I think, I think if anything, this year it's going to be uh, – you know, more changes. Um, and I think, you know, I, do I like it? No. Uh, do I like that it gives us a much greater chance of keeping everybody healthy and make sure that the game is going to be played? Uh, yes, I like that. So it's, a uh, it's necessary, uh, to an extent, or at least early on, I, I think early is, is going to tell us a lot. Uh, and I, you know, hopefully once things get warmer, uh, there's more vaccine distribution. I, I think things will get better. Well, I I think you might have mentioned this last year, but what is what is a thing or a few things that you missed the most about the preparation? I, I seem to remember it was like harder to do video, like prep. Yeah. So, uh, so I like to do all my scouting at the field. I come in, uh, you know, that's where I work at the baseball field. I I go into my computer lab. I got my people there and that's where I scout. And that was more or less not something I could do last year. So I had to do it by myself on an iPad in the hotel room. You know, it's just something, yeah. I mean, is it that big of a deal? Probably not. Uh, it's just, I'm pretty resistant to change and didn't want to change. So I had to do that. Um, there were more restrictions when it came, comes to uh, the hot tank, cold tank. Um, you know, which is a big part of recovery for me. Uh, so that was more of a post game, uh, change that I had to make and, uh, in game video. Once again, that was, I don't guess that, I guess that was partially a COVID thing, partially a sign stealing thing. Um, that's a big change for me. Uh, and I think. I think some of that has changed coming going forward this year, uh, and some of it hasn't. And then, and then just finally, and the reason I'm asking is because I know that you're so uh, that you you get so much benefit out of your routine. Um, just being in weird times in general, um, last season and this season, and then on top of that, uh, the idea that your your team is going through a lot of changes also. <laughs> Uh, on the roster specifically, do you do you feel at all unsettled? Are you are you going to have to kind of come to grips with with all of these changes at all? Uh, the beauty of spring training is like you you, you kind of start with this super broad focus, and right now I'm just kind of trying to make my body feel good and getting used to being back in Arizona and waking up at six in the morning, you know, and then it'll be another couple weeks before I'm really worried about my swing. And then it'll be another week or two before I'm, I start thinking about the season. And so I think there's some things that are going to be different and I just haven't addressed them mentally, you know? Um, Cause right now we're just, I'm not there yet. I'm just, we're, it's still early in spring training. Um, but I do think none of these changes are going to be super drastic or anything that I won't be able to deal with. Uh, I, I think the biggest shock to my system was last year, right? We, we came in with this crazy, like sp sp fake spring training. I guess it wasn't fake, you know, like whatever you want to call it, spring training 2.0. And, you know, and then I had the virus. I mean, 
and, and then for the first time we're dealing with all these restrictions, last year is going to be much more of a, an adjustment than this year. Pat Graham, go ahead. Hey, Charlie, thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Good to see you. Um, I'm kind of piggybacking a little bit off uh, Nick's questions. I don't mean to bombard you with this, but uh, you know, there's some talk in the in the first part of spring training that they may go to five innings or seven innings instead of nine. Um, I was just wondering, how does that affect your preparation? I mean, I know that you come out of the games early, but how will you kind of augment that with, like, will you go to the batting cages after that, or how does that work? How will that work for you? Honestly, I probably won't change a single thing. Um, you know, I've, d I've done the spring training thing. I have a pretty good feel for how much time and when, you know, when I need to play a certain amount of innings. And, and it, it's pretty regimented for me. Uh, and if, as long as I can stay on track, and I think we'll play enough baseball to where I can stay on track. I don't think, at least early on, is when I expect to see shortened games uh, due to there not being as many people in camp and there's not as many... Um, innings to be thrown by the pitchers. I, I think at that time, I'll also be in a situation where I'm still building up. Um, so I, I don't really anticipate having to make any changes to what I feel like is normal for me in spring training. Good answer. And then my other question would be, uh, you know, you were one of the you know, guys who kind of kept this team together in, in light of the uh, Nolan Arenado deal. And, uh, you know, they praised you for kind of helping out in Desmond and Story, I guess. And then, you know, Carol Freeland came out and said, you know, we could shock the world, don't, don't give up on us. I guess, do you like being an underdog and do you like this role? I mean, no, no one expects anything from you guys. You guys can just do your thing and fly under the radar. Um, you know, per personally, I don't really care what anybody else thinks about me or the team. I, I, don't, I don't think you guys have any, <laughs> you don't have as much of an idea as I do and the people inside the clubhouse. Let's just say that's fair. Um, so I don't, I don't really let what people think outside the clubhouse affect what I do, you know, inside the clubhouse, right? If I were to let the fact that some member of the national media says we're going to stink this year or whatever, you know, if I let that change how I feel or how I think or how I prepare, like what kind of professional player am I? Um, so, so really, I'm, you know, I'm going to do my best uh, like I do every year and I uh, expect the same from my teammates around me. And I think we're going to go out there and be super competitive and play good baseball. And then my last one would be this. Ryan McMahon is looking like he could, you know, he's going to be a third trying to replace Nolan. I don't want to say replace because that's not fair. Just give us a little like, like Cliff Notes version of Ryan. What does he bring to the field? Um, really, really high ceiling for Ryan. Um, uh, first and foremost, when he played second base every day, he was much better than I thought he was going to be. He, he really is a good defender. Um, and that was playing second, which really isn't his natural position. I haven't seen him play a lot of third. I definitely haven't seen him play third consistently. So I think if he can just move on a dime and play second really well, I expect him to, to do, do pretty, pretty great at third. Um, right, Nolan is, is one of the best defenders there is. But, um, but I, in his own right, I think Ryan McMahon is, a, is going to be a good third baseman. Um, but that's not as exciting as his power potential. He has incredible power, and I think he's going to be a, a, a big part of our lineup this year. Um, and I just want to see him go out there and play baseball every day. You know, just show up, play hard, do the best he can, uh, and, and then bring it the, the very next day. And I think if he does that, I think he'll look up at the end of the season and, and he'll be happy with what he's done. Thanks for your time. All right, guys, if you can limit yourselves to two questions, that would be helpful with uh, with time here. Uh, Patrick Saunders, you are next. Hi, Charlie. How are you, sir? Great. Good. Can you um, give me a quick assessment, if you would, of um, your outfield teammates? Um, it's a pretty young group outside of yourself, especially now that Desi's gone. Uh, just a thumbnail on um, the potential of some of those guys. Mm-hmm. Um... Well, I, th I think Romel Tapia took a huge step forward last year, like giant leap for him, came out uh, in a position of need and, and really was a good leadoff hitter. Uh, super competitive in the box, maybe that's, that might be his best quality. He's just, he's, he's just hard to get out. He can really lock in uh, every at bat. And, and he's, uh, you know, what, he hit 300 last year and, and we needed that leadoff presence. Um, and, and so hopefully he can build on that 
Um, and then we have uh, Sam Hilliard, who is one of the more toolsy guys we have on the team. He reminds me a lot of Trevor Story. He's super fast, uh, very good power, um, just a just super athletic, like all over. Uh, and he's been able to make some adjustments at the big league level. And so I'm looking for him to take another step forward this year as well. And then you've got a couple guys in the mix, uh, you know, like, um, you know, I, I think a big part of our team this year will be Garrett Hampson and his versatility. I think you'll see him in the outfield. I think you'll see him in the infield. And of course, his best tool is speed. And, and the Rockies always need versatility. We need someone to be able to move around uh, the field and play multiple positions and, you know, give guys days off or if someone is tight for a day, they can, you know, he can step in and play. And I think he's going to be, um, you know, very productive in that role this year. Cool. Uh, one more for you, Charlie. Uh, the offense, I think you're well aware, has been inconsistent over the last couple of seasons. You've had some highlights, but overall it hasn't produced like you need to as a team. Do you think that an overall change in approach would be good for this group of guys? And what I'm getting there is you do have good team speed. Uh, the homers, I suppose, are going to come. But do you think you guys need to be more of a advance the runner kind of offense? I, I think that's a really good question. I, Me personally, I feel like offense is – sometimes a, a team game and sometimes it's individual. And I think, I think what we need is we need um, players to excel individually, right? Like I need Romel Tapia to do the same thing he did last year, like really grind at bats and, and, and try and get on base a lot. Um, and then I want Ryan McMahon to drive in runs. Um, you know, I think Trevor Story is going – to be the like Mr. Do It All, I want him. You know, I think he can hit for average. I think he can hit for power, driving runs. I think he can he can do that. And and so I, I think we just need to have each player be be better. You know that. Sorry, that's super elementary. But I, I felt like last year was kind of a perfect storm of multiple players underperforming all in the same year. Um, and I just I just think we can't ha you know can't have that this this year. I think I think we've got to be better. And I don't think taking an approach like station to station or super situational hitting or trying to hit more home runs, I don't think you can take a blanket statement that is, is always good offensively. Like it's always great to hit more home runs, but to take that and then try and stamp that onto every player in the lineup, I don't think works. I think you've got you've to help each player reach their potential at whatever it is their strengths are. And then fit them together as a team. Great answer. Thanks, Charlie. All right, Thomas Harding, go ahead. Yes, Charlie, um, just to look back at last season and the ups and downs of it, what enjoyment did you get out of it and what parts of it that you were so happy when the season ended? Um, Thomas, I always love playing baseball. And any day I'm, I'm healthy and get to go out and play a big league baseball game is just an incredible day. Uh, and I think that sort of helps me keep things in perspective. Um, and, you know, I, th I think there were a lot of good things that came from last year. We got a lot of, we got a lot more experience. Our young guys got more experience. We, we got to use guys in the bullpen that we haven't used before. Um, you know, I, I just think a lot has happened that's going to help us this year, right? Last year was a was a tough year, but the thing about baseball is that if if nothing bad ever happens, if you don't ever struggle, I just feel like you don't you don't get any better, you don't make any adjustments. Uh, and as much as I'd love to to just be successful all the time, um, it's it's a really tough game, and I would never be pushed to get better. Um, and, and if you want to feel alive, go out there and get your, get your butt kicked or strike out in a big spot or, you know, make that air, uh, that loses the game. Like that's for me, that's when I feel the most alive. I hate it and, and I want to change it and, and I don't let it happen again. Um, and so I, I think, you know, I think there's, yeah, there's good things that happened from last year, bad things. And, 
but I, I think all of it will be for the better for 2021. How, um, and you talk a bit about offensive baseball being an in individual thing. Baseball can be a very individual thing. How much, though, are you trying to rub off on teammates now? Um, not everybody prepares the way you do, thinks the way you do. Are, are you at a stage where maybe you can impart some of that wisdom to others or really is that your job? I, I think so. I think, I think a big part of what I want to do now is really – have a sense of what, where everybody's at individually, you know, just because I've gotten a hit off of this one guy before, because I faced him 30 times and this other guy who's never faced him before. I just think there's like, for me to just bludgeon him with information doesn't help. I, I think what I need to understand is, Hey, this guy is, you know, doesn't have that many at bats and is, you know, he just doesn't, you know, like what information do they need at the time? And sometimes it's, uh, I need to instill confidence in them. Sometimes it, it is the fact that they might need a scouting report or sometimes it's, they just need to vent about their swing, you know, and just have somebody like let them know that they care and, and listen to what they have to say. So I think sometimes just having that feel for, uh, you know, what does each player need from, from a really good teammate? I think that's what I'm going to try and do this year. And that doesn't always mean, you know, telling people how to, what I think makes their swing better, right? That's that's almost never the case. Um, are you comfortable with that? Have you gotten more comfortable over the years? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, I, I you know I feel pretty comfortable, and I think one of my strengths is more of a of a of a one on one conversation, and it's you know I I think that is much more productive than getting the whole group together and saying hey we got to do this or do that. Like I I think that's necessary at times but i think more gains are made with a one-on-one -on -one conversation than than large groups and j just last one i hate to um, add extra but um do you feel like more guys on the team can have those detailed baseball conversations is the knowledge base there because once you get to a certain level you can talk about those, but sometimes you just try to keep your head above water. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, and, and like I said, there's there's certain times when guys can can look big picture and, and, and really try and take the next step. And then there's certain times where it's I'm just trying to tread water. You know, I'm just I'm struggling and I just need to. I need, I just need to feel competitive. Right. And, 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 and that's the season, you know, you have ups and downs and it's everybody, it's me. It's, I mean, it's everybody has that at certain times. Um, I just think, you know, the better players have few of those fewer dips and spend more time like somewhere up here trying to like push the ceiling up. All right, Brian Madden, go ahead. Hey, it's actually Michael Spencer from CBS four. Um, Charlie, Take us back a couple of weeks, and what were your initial thoughts when you found out that no one had been traded? Well, I mean, the, you know, my first thought is, oh, well, I don't get to play with one of my buddies, um, and, you know, and that and that hurts. He's he's a guy I enjoy being around. Uh, he's an, a guy that I'll certainly keep in touch with uh, as we go forward. Um, you know, secondly, he's a great baseball player, and anytime you take a great baseball player off of a team, you, you're 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 going to lose some whatever that, that production is. And, and him being a good player, we're gonna lose some production. Um, and then I think the, you know, the, the third part of that coin, coins only have two parts. Uh, anyway, the third part is, is now I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, how do we move forward in the wake of his absence? And, uh, and, and that's the part that doesn't scare me as much as it did, you know, initially when it first happened, you know, when I look around and I see, um, you know, the talent in the locker room, who's going to replace him, um, you know, and, and what it means for, for our team. Like, I think we I think we still have a good team. We have lots of talent. Um, I think it's, you know, it seems bad being that we didn't have a great season last year. But at the same time, we had so many players underperform, you know, including myself. Like, there was a huge dip there. Um, and so I, I think if if we come out and, and do what we're capable of doing, we're, we're going to play well. Uh, a non-baseball one for you. What's life like as a new dad? <laughs> That's great. It's, uh, 
it's it keeps me on my toes. Um, it's kind of like trying to figure out a Rubik's cube. Like you just know you're never going to do it, but you keep trying. Uh, there, there's, it's uh, but it's super rewarding and, and it's exciting and it's a, a fun experience to share with my wife. Thanks, man. Happy for you guys. Thank you. All right, Mark Kisla, go ahead. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the uh, philosophy of you never feel more alive than when you get your butt kicked because I must be the most alive guy on the planet. So I appreciate you for that. Um, let's just, uh, for early in this conversation, I think we established the outside view of the Rockies is you guys stink. And your view is you don't care. Why do you think this team can be so good? Uh, because we have good players is the short answer. Um, because the potential of each player is, or f the potential of most of our players that I expect to see on the field for the Rockies is well above uh, league average, right? And and if you look around at our lineup and and yeah, maybe it's cherry picking to say, wow, this guy was you know was really really good at one point in his career. You know, a lot of guys, yes, a lot of guys can do that. But I think there's a lot of guys that have the ability to do that consistently that haven't done it yet, right? We've seen Kyle Freeland be an unbelievable pitcher. Uh, we've seen him be not so great. Um, but last year he was really, really good, take a huge step forward. And so I'm expecting him to be closer to that really, really good Cy Young conversation pitcher than he was uh, you know, two years ago when he had a bad year, right? So there's a perfect example. I, I think we have a handful of guys that are poised to play somewhere up here rather than somewhere down here where they ha that where we were last year or you know we were at times when when things weren't going well and to follow up uh, along the dad lines uh, having been a dad or I am a dad myself what's 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 harder and what's more rewarding uh, hitting a baseball or being a dad good question um, the right answer is obviously being a dad that's the right <laughs> answer um, but I'll tell you what, like, I really like getting hits, love getting hits, want to win everything. Um, and, and yeah, there are more important things than baseball. Um, and, uh, anyway, yeah, I love my family and, and love my daughter. Um, but I still like really, really want to win baseball games and, and feel like I, uh, I'm not going to have any trouble being a hundred percent focused on baseball. All right, Noah Yingling, then we'll get uh, Owen after you for the last question. Hey, Charlie, thanks for the time. Um, to follow up a little bit on your answer to Michael Spencer's question, your big drop off when you started the season hitting 500 in the first 17 games, you hit 216 in the following games after that. Were there any big changes that you happen to see video wise, whether that was in the off season or this spring that you want to adjust back to when you were hitting 500? No, no. Uh, so at the end of the year, I'll sit down, you know, what could I have done differently? What did I do well? Uh, try, you know, and that's a situation where I try to diagnose like, why did I spend more time down here than I should have? And so I've figured out kind of more or less what I think it was. Um, and, uh, and, and address that problem. And, try and keep it from happening in the future. Yeah, but, but it's, it's rarely mechanics for me. Uh, sometimes it is, but, but usually it'll be, um, you know, like mental or an aggressiveness thing. You know, I, I don't feel like I um, have some glaring mechanical issue in my swing. You know, there's none of that that I'm trying to address. Okay, um, and also too, um, obviously with Ian Desmond not being there anymore, at least for now, um, and Nolan not being there. Um, obviously, you're one of the more, you are the most veteran player on the team. Um, Leadership-wise, have you, outside of you, this spring training, have you seen anybody really step up into more of that leadership role? Yeah, I mean, I think we we might have already touched on it, but but I see Trevor really really taking big steps forward um 
and that you know it's it's really hard to do the leadership thing right there's there's a a cycle right and, and we've seen trevor take this cycle I mean, you're you get called up to the big leagues you're a young player and you're you, you know you're super wide-eyed like drinking from a water hose or a fire hose and you know and then next step is uh all right now i'm just trying to keep my head above water and be competitive and then um and we've certainly seen him then be really really good at baseball and he's just continuing to get better now he's doing it more consistently year after year a great player and and now you see him look around and say wow i can i can make these other guys around me better i can i can help this guy or i can you know i i can take on more responsibility as a leader um and and so i'm starting to see that from him uh and i'm starting to see uh a lot of the younger guys you know progress on that ladder of 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 being overwhelmed because i'm in the big leagues now they're you know, tasting success or playing well at times. And I think they're on their path to uh, being comfortable with them and, and, and how to play their game. And they're like right, you know, at the cusp of, of, of leadership. So I'm seeing a lot of guys progress from a leadership standpoint. Okay, thank you very much. All right, Owen Perkins, you have the last question. Hey, Charlie, good to see you. Um, I wanted to ask about this early part of spring training. You know, almost unique in a potential eight month plus stretch of baseball from February to October with, without the games every day. What, what does that period mean to you? What do you get out of it? Is, do you anticipate year to year getting some value out of that time period? And, and can you think of things that have been important to you that come in this early stage of the, of the training? I'm sorry, what, what time period was it that you were? Uh, like the current one, before the games start at spring training. Yeah, um, yeah. right. Um, I, I love spring training. Um, a lot of people don't like it. I think it's great uh, for a lot of reasons. You, you know, you, you, you get to see your friends again for the first time in a while. Um, you, you know, you're cranking back up. You, you know, you've been hiding somewhere in some cold dark batting cage somewhere for the last few months and now you're out in the sun uh and you're just you're just happy um and then you get to you get to just start playing the game for fun right like yes there's stats in spring training yes there's competition and jobs to be won and jobs to be lost um but it, it's a little more relaxed you, you're playing uh it's new and fresh and fun so i i really enjoy spring training and i love this time where where you get to wake up and play during the day and then you have your you know your evenings to go hang out with your family um i, I mean i think spring training is really cool uh so there's there's no part of my year that i that i wish would just hurry up and pass i mean i enjoy every every stage but but there's a lot to like about spring training um and, and yeah I, I enjoy it and just to hone in a little more you know before you start playing the exhibition games and this um, you know, that, that first week or so. Um, what about that? Is that a time that, that you get some value, some some things important in that before you get to the games, the exhibition games? Yeah, honestly, uh, my focus during that time, it, it's always a big transition for me from going to where I'm at, wherever I'm training in the off season. And, and honestly, I think I do a good job in the off season. Like I, I think I'm in shape, I'm ready to play, I'm strong, I've been hitting no matter how good your off-season program is there's always an adjustment going from that to being on a field with your teammates in front of the coaching staff you know in on a spring training field like there's just a level of intensity where it just goes up you know like no way around it no matter how what you're doing in the off-season and so i think just making that jump is kind of what i'm focused on you know this first week before game start and it's it's making sure my body's ready to play. That's that's most of what it is, is, is getting my body ready to play, um, transitioning into that super competitive, you know, world-class athlete type intensity, which is hard to simulate, you know, at home in the batting cage. Great, thank you. And thank you, Charlie. Thanks everyone else for jumping on. We will see everybody.